Okay guys, uh, thanks for tuning into this video. In this video we're going to jump into the Wyoming Game and Fish website and go over how to look up what seasons and what tags are going to be available for the upcoming season. And we'll also look at drawing odds, where to look up your preference points, draw results. And then we're going to jump right into the Game and Fish website and I'm going to show you how to apply. So I'm just going to Google Wyoming Game and Fish here. You want to find this one, uh, Wyoming Game and Fish, uh, .yo.gov. And so this is the home page here. Mostly what we're going to be working in are these top two links on the left, um, apply or buy, and then hunting in Wyoming. So first let's just jump into hunting in Wyoming and we'll, and we'll look at what's in this section of the website. So if we scroll down here a little bit, this maps and regulation um, link on this side is where we're going to click to find all of the upcoming seasons and maps and information like that. So if you're looking for somewhere to hunt or looking for an area that you know you want to hunt, then you can jump in there, find out what unit it is, and then look at upcoming seasons and tags. So. Later on, we'll jump down into this other stuff in draw results, um, drawing odds. This is where you find your preference points. But for now, let's jump into maps and regulations. So what you're going to see here is everything's broken down by species. And what we're looking at are sort of these where it says new hunting seasons. So everything's been approved by the Wyoming Game and Fish Commission, and it has to be signed by the governor so that's why it says it's still there it can take 75 days for that to happen but let's jump in here to um, antelope hunting seasons and we'll look at uh, some options and kind of what they what information's in here so you can save these it's a PDF you can save it to your computer if you don't want to come back into it all the time and so on this end you're going to see hunt area type and then uh, you can see there's different types I talked about it this in some of our last videos we got our season openers, season closures how many tags are going to be available what type of license it is and then the limitations of that license so for example you can see here you can have you know hunt area one and let's scroll down and find one that has a few more options here and, and we'll go through through it. So let's look here at uh, unit 57 where we have four different types and you can see that we have a type 1, a type 2, a type 6, and a type 7. So the type 1 license is September 20th opener um, so does the type 2 but you jump over to limitations and you can see the difference between those. So type 2 is a license that's only going to be valid in a portion of unit 57, whereas type 1 is going to be in the whole unit. So that's an example of how a type 2 tag might differ from another, from a type 1 tag. And sometimes you'll see uh, season date differences in these as well. So you can see... Um, the these are all limited quota all antelope tags in Wyoming are limited quota and there's going to be 325 licenses available that for any antelope and then if we jump down and look at the type 6 and type 7 those are a reduced price doe fawn and you can see that type 7 has a different limitation and a different season date than the type 6 so that's a private land within one mile of uh, of that county road so that's just the limitation of that that's what you'll typically see with type 6 and then type 7 licenses so we'll remember type we'll remember area 57 this isn't the unit that I'm going to apply for but when we jump in to the um, actual application we'll we'll uh, we'll just plan on putting in for maybe this 57 type 1 but if we come down here, let's look at another one. 
um, 77 so you can see in 77 there's also four licenses but this type 2 differs in the date and then the limitations on it are a little bit different too because it says uh, with, within a half mile of irrigated land so this is going to be mostly private land or some public that's right up against it so if we jump down here further you can just see all these different hunt areas different hunt types you know the season dates the season closures um, the quotas and the limitations of each one so if you have an area that you want to hunt jump on the map find the hunt area uh, look at the types of licenses that are available and look up your draw odds and decide if you want to apply for it or not now I use Onyx maps um, or like a BLM ownership map for a lot of Wyoming to look at land ownership because I'm mostly looking for public land um, that I'll be able to hunt in units that have you know at least some public land as you get on the eastern side of the state you run into a lot less public land than you do on the west but you can also get tags a lot easier because everybody has that problem so if you can secure permission or you know search through something like onyx maps and find some of these little hidden areas that have like a county road that goes into them or whatever then you can you can hunt them a lot of wyoming south of i-80 has um checkerboard and in wyoming you can't jump across the checkerboard off a, a corner so you can't corner hop so keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, land ownership that uh you know I look for units that have some that you can access so let's look at deer seasons and we've talked about general seasons how they're for non-residents in Wyoming the general deer seasons are grouped into regions and so let's jump in here and we can look at uh, some of these general licenses versus the limited quota in deer because there there are those two different types of license so you'll see any general license doesn't have a type and you can see their opening closures um, and they won't have a quota listed on them either but that quota can be found um, at the at the bottom of this um, at, well at the bottom of the seasons so the very the very bottom of this is going to have each unit and the boundaries um, written out so you can really know where the actual boundary is so this table here this is going to show you the general regions, what areas are within those regions, and then the quotas for those regions. So if we look down, you know, like Region A has a 4,500. If you look down at Regions G and H, 400 and 600 respectively, and those have both been reduced. So if you look at Region H, you can see all of these different uh, units that are in there, and there is a uh, I think one or two units in the geographic boundaries of Region H that are limited quota, like 130, has a Type 1 tag. So it has a, or you can hunt it on the general earlier, but it has a later Type 1 tag. So that wouldn't be something you could hunt on a Region H license. This spells out special archery seasons and special archery dates. so let's scroll up and look at some of these uh, let's look here at uh, some of these region G units so 135 we see it's a general general tag it opens October 1st this year it's going to close on the 6th um, and then the limitations that we see here are this antler point restriction rule three point or better on mule deer and then or you can take any white-tailed deer so you'll see this year in regions G and H that all of the season dates close on the same day on, on October 6 but they open on different dates so 143 144 and 145 are the remaining units in region G and they're all going to open on the 15th and they all have the same APR the same antler point restriction rule in place which that's new this year for regions G&H due to the winter mortality 
if you look at 145 you see you know there's just a few more types available here um, type 3 which is in which is a white tailed deer tag and it's a limited quota so you can see the dates are a little bit different on those and uh, so you can just kind of look through here and look at all the different uh, units and types and season dates and limitations so hopefully you can just kind of jump in here and find a hunt that you want I mean what I typically do is look on a map find the area that looks good to me find out which unit it's in come into this table see if it's a general or limited quota look up my draw odds and if it's something I think looks good then I go from there so let's go back and look down here so you're gonna find the same things for elk uh, which we probably won't really jump into elk right now because we went over that a lot in the January video and it's really only residents that are putting in for elk right now and most of them are gonna have a little better idea of how to do that so let's jump back here to hunting in Wyoming back to this page and we'll go into um, drawing odds so we have listed here our odds from 2010 to 2017 so we're putting in for 2017 now so the actual odds won't be out until after the draw so the best odds that we're going to see are is going to be looking back at 2016 and so if we jump in here then you can see they're all broken down by species and then they're broken down by the drawing and then regular draw and special draw so it does look a little bit complicated there's lots of things to look at just remember that there's preference point drawings for for the regular draw and the special draw and then there's a random drawing for the regular draw and the special draw residents don't have that so it's a lot more simple there's just a single resident random draw for um, antelope deer and elk you can see the same thing down here for deer um, and each of these links on the right are going to are going to put you in um, to a PDF that has the information on it. So you can see here the we have the random draw, um, non-resident, non-resident special, and then the preference point draw, non-resident and non-resident special. So let's jump in here um, and look at some of these. We'll go to non-resident preference point regular draw and let's go down and look at a unit that we've talked about. Let's look at a general unit. Um, let's just go ahead and look at well region J that goes down to everybody kind of draws that so let's go let's just go ahead and look at region G here in the middle of the screen and so what you'll see here on the left that's the quota so in this drawing there's 255 tags allocated to to give away here and on the top row we see eight tags were issued um, and in that middle row you see how many preference points those eight people had and so it's going to go down through here to each of the point pools and show you how many applicants there were and how many tags were awarded in each point pool so you see eight issued here uh, people with 10 points that's max points right now and then there was eight applicants so they all drew so you can see their odds of drawing over on the right so it's a hundred percent you can go down to the next row um, so you've got that 255 on the left minus the eight tags equals 247 left to go down into the next point pool which is this in between point pool which is going to be nine point something right and so remember that Wyoming will average your points but they don't round them down I mean they round them to like 
the fifth decimal place. And so nobody put in with nine point something points. So jump down to nine. You can see eight people put in here. Eight tags were rewarded. And then it subtracted from the quota over on the left side. So if we just move kind of on down through all these point pools here, you can see the quota decrease. And you can come down here to um, five point something or this less than six point pool is the last point pool where applicants had a hundred percent chance of drawing so you can see that there on the right so if you look below that at five right this is going to be the point pool where not everybody drew and so you've got uh, you know like nineteen percent odds there at five points and you can see what's left over um, here on the end the first choice applicant so all these guys is 141 minus uh, 27 those guys are going to be guys that didn't draw and then everybody below the five point pool this 1340 people they're all moving into the random draw and they'll have another chance to draw there so let's jump back out of here um, and we'll go back and we'll jump into the regular random draw so non-resident random draw and we'll scroll down so this is all random they don't remember how many points you have everyone has one chance so you can come down in here to region G you can see how many first choice applicants there were and how many tags were awarded and so we can do this oops I messed this up let me do it again we can go 85 divided by 1454 and that's going to give us our random draw odds so you got 5.8% So remember, this is in the regular draw. Um, second and third choice applicants don't really even have a chance to draw in here because there's still 1,300 and something first choice applicants that did not draw in Region G last year. So the best way to kind of trend what happens year to year is to look at 2016 compared to what was, what happened in 2015 versus 2014 and just kind of make a guess at what you think is going to happen for 2017. So let's compare now to um, the special. So remember 40 percent of the overall tags go into the special drawing and so we'll jump into the preference point non-resident special draw and we'll go back down and we'll look at G and we'll compare draw odds when you pay a little bit more money to be in that special drawing versus just the regular drawing. And so in the regular draw we had people with 10 points putting in in the special we are just seeing um, seven points and on down and so we got 171 tags available um, one person put in with seven points and drew and then we can go on down the line here uh, and we see that four point something you know, so this less than five point pool drew 100%, but then the, f the four point pool was only 11% odds. So it's about one point different than what we saw in the regular drawing. So essentially, you needed four point something, you know, points to draw that tag 100% last year. So let's jump up to the random draw in the special drawing here and we'll go down and look at the odds for region G so we got 57 tags available 620 first choice applicants so we'll just divide 57 by 620 and our odds are 9.2 percent so almost almost double you no know, one in 10 one in 11 people 
are drawn region G in the special just at random. So you've always got that chance. So let's uh, jump back out of here. I mean, you can look at all these hunt areas, um, all the limited quota areas, and see what happened with them too. So we'll just jump back in here to preference points uh, in the regular draw. Let's look at a limited quota unit for a minute. Let's look at 102. So this is limited quota only. This is a max point type um, unit. So you got 12 tags, 12 issued for people with 10 points out of 48 first choice applicants. So it's only 25% draw in the max point pool. So if you had less than that, then you don't have very good odds. So compare that to the special here. We'll draw look at 102 so where there's nine tags available 31 people put in they issued one more for some reason they issued 10 tags um, once again max point guys so draw odds were 29.03 so you're only about four percent better than the regular and now let's jump over into the random and you can see sort of on, the, on these limited quota tags that don't have a lot of tags how the odds are uh, kind of decreased pretty bad. So, I mean, you've only got four tags, 637 first choice applicants. Your 0.6% uh, odds of drawing. So, not awesome. Let's compare that with special. Uh, 102 so only two tags in this drawing out of 175 so you can have a little bit better odds than the regular you got 1.1 percent so one in a hundred so you can kind of see how you can look up all the all the different units whether it's limited quota or general um, so antelope is going to be really similar but all the antelope tags are limited quota deer has general and limited quota so just remember how we have essentially there's four different drawings after the preference point pass then the random pass is going to go through for everybody so you've always got a chance to draw except for in some cases um, like really low tag numbers in a certain unit there won't be any random tags so if you're not a max point holder you don't have a chance of drawing at all so the difference between like elk and bighorn sheep is that there's not a special drawing for bighorn sheep moose uh, mountain goat or bison so you can't pay extra for better odds so it's a little bit simpler to look at in here so let's jump back out here to hunting in Wyoming and if you click here on preference points this is where you're gonna be able to view how many preference points you have and this top parts like total preference points in the state this is also where you can purchase preference points so if you miss the drawing or just want to do points later you can buy them from July 1st to October 31st um, draw results are also going to be found right in here so you can just click draw results enter your information uh, I'll just put mine in here to show you what it looks like so you can see I was not successful for Moose or Mountain Goat this year and then it's going to show my preference point totals here at the bottom so as a resident I don't have any deer elk or antelope and so that's going to be where you come to check so Let's go into apply or buy now, and I'm going to show you how to apply for your license. So you're just going to click down here on apply for license. Um, what you need to know before applying, you're going to want your species, you're going to want to know your um, what unit you want to hunt, and you're also going to want to have the type and then the party ID, and we'll show you kind of how that works. If you're the first person putting in for a party, uh, you're going to want to pass that party ID information along to whoever else is putting in with you or you won't be in a party together so let's go ahead and we'll click continue 
It's just telling you they're going to charge your credit card up front. So this is where you're going to put in your sports person's ID. If you've bought a fishing license in Wyoming or any license before, you'll have one. If not, you'll click on new sports person. It'll search for you. If it doesn't find you, it's just going to prompt you to go through and, and create a new account. So I'll put my ID in here and it's going to open up this page that has my information. You've got to declare your residency. So it's a little bit different from here. I'm going to click yes, I am a resident. Hit continue. Um, this is just confirming I'm a resident. If you're not a resident, you don't have to do all this stuff, but we'll click into it. Uh, you have to provide your residency information and some verification. So I'll just put my driver's license number in here, which I'm not going to show you guys, so you can't jump in here and apply for me. So anything in bold is open right now for applications. So non-residents are going to see that there's no elk applications open right now because that happened back in January. Super tags that you can put in for those right now too. That's pretty much just like a lottery tag. That's a really cool tag. You can buy as many entries as you want. So we're going to, let's click in here to, to antelope. So this is where you're going to choose whether you're putting together as a an, as an individual, a party organizer, or a party member. So if we'll just pretend that I'm the first person in this party to put in, and so I'm going to be the party organizer, and I'll hit continue. Pay attention to this party ID that it gives you in the top left. You're going to want to pass that along to the other people to put in with you. So now this is where we choose which hunts we're going to put in for. You can click over there and look at the map, but let's just go back to that same unit we were looking at before, uh, unit 57, uh, type 1. And then second choice, we'll just put... Um, Let's just do 57, type 2. Um, so just notice that you've got a non-refundable application fee. It's more for non-residents. So if you see, I clicked that. It gave me an error because I didn't click the top left here under Enter Drawing. So you've got to jump up there and click that box. Then you can come back down, hit Continue. Um, this is just asking for donations. We're going to continue without donations right now. So here we can see what we put in for first, second choice, our party ID again, and the price. So we're going to go. Um, we're going to go ahead and add another application. Let's do deer. On deer, let's just say we're going to go as an individual. Can't get any of our buddies to put in with us. So we'll hit continue, you'll notice there's no party ID anymore, or at least on this application, and we're going to jump down. And um, you'll see here, as a non-resident, you'll have general options for those regions. As a resident, I don't, because the general is just over the counter. So let's go down, and we'll apply for 102, which is the limited quota tag that we look for look, um, in the draw odds. We'll have to put a type. There's only a type 1 license in 102. And second choice, we'll put general. Because if we don't draw, we want a general tag. Um, so this time, let's just add a donation. Access Yes is like a like private land lease for us people to hunt. For every dollar that you donate to Access Yes, it, it provides about three acres of land that it opens up to hunting so we'll, we'll just put a couple dollars in there two dollars to search and rescue we gotta click the boxes hit continue jump in there and then we'll go add to shopping cart so now we'll be able to see our antelope application uh, with the party and our deer and you can you know say you're putting in for your brother or your buddy or whatever you can do that um, too by switching sports person but here's our you know it pretty much shows everything we put in for one of two type one general individual and the cost so you see the difference between the party application and the other one so we can click check out now this is going to just prompt us to buy super tags um, we're not going to do that 
and we'll just what you'll do to continue with checkout just click that you put in your credit card information and you're good so that's kind of how you apply for tags you guys uh, hopefully this was helpful and showed you kind of the way around the Wyoming Game and Fish Department website if you have any more questions please let us know uh, Wyoming Game and Fish is they're really good very helpful I've called them uh, twice this year and you can contact them um, let's scroll down to the bottom their contact information will be down here under contact us you'll see it there so 777 4600 during business hours they can answer your questions probably provide a little bit of information you can call your uh, biologists and game wardens in areas that you're thinking about hunting and they they have a lot of good information too anyway guys hopefully this was uh, helpful Please let me know if you have any questions, and good luck in the draws in Wyoming this year.